First and foremost, I would like to express my apologies for taking forever to making my next episode of the segment of my channel called Conumentary. The reason being is because 2018 was such a busy year for me, not only on game reviews, but also my day job can really take its toll on both mind and body that it tires me out so fast. Now I have recorded footage of my most recent convention called PAX South 2019. However, that video will be uploaded on a later date as I still have videos from the past year that I still need to make. So yeah, I'll have to try my hardest to actually organize my videos and my time a lot better. With that said, let's get on with my documentary of Comic Palooza 2018. For a decade, I attend conventions for the thrills, the trends, the love for cosplay, and excitement of meeting new friends that share the same interests as I do. I consider indoor and outdoor events as well as vacation spots as conventions in of themselves, as I get involved in exploration, seeing the latest in collections, getting to know the community, and typing about my experiences, all while having fun doing it. These are my stories. I am Masashi X, and welcome to the Masashi X Chronicles Conumentary. Comic Palooza is Houston's flagship comic convention that started out as a one-day convention back in 2008 in the Alamo Drafthouse Cinema, corresponding with the premiere of The Dark Knight, complete with tables of some comic book artists to provide some entertainment. However, over time, at around 2010, it would then become a three-day event which would cater to about more than 3,000 attendees, and the event is not focused solely on just comic books alone, as other genres like science fiction, fantasy, horror, and anime are also being included. I would not find myself going until 2012 and I had a great time visiting the convention, not only to see some things new in a comic con that makes its atmosphere different from an anime convention, but also to actually see some celebrities that would make an appearance to meet and greet fans. Over the years, I've met a handful of celebrities including the legendary Stan Lee himself, and it's great that I've also get to see some interesting activities happen in that convention and take part on it. However, right around 2017, what with the change in ownership and management, did it somehow affect my opinion of the 2018 event? I would commend the fact that security has been amped up for that year, as there were past Comic Cons that would involve some kind of incident. As expected, there are registration lines that are well organized as a convention should be, and unlike one Houston convention around that time, which I will not name, there's actually more than one entrance and exit, thus preventing extra walking time and distance. It was also a good thing that I also brought my Pecos Pete's mug with me so that I could pay less for infinite drinks each day, rather than buying another mug that would be $25 extra, maybe even more than that. Of course, it wouldn't be a convention without a huge line that's waiting for the exhibit hall to be open with many attendees eager to get in and get their hands on merchandises. Thankfully, the overall layout of the convention remains the same, at least here on the first floor, so it's really easy to navigate. The exhibit hall would be divided into four sections, ranging from the activities section, merchandises, artist alleys, and a celebrity section. I do find it cool to see BBVA Compass host their own section near the celebrity section with their variety of old school arcade games that are right up my alley, be it Ninja Turtles, Star Wars Trilogy Arcade, or some old school Pac-Man and Frogger. Sadly, I can't go past the celebrity section to film footage, but I'll get to that section later in the video. The activity section has a variety of stuff to see, such as seeing LARP, or live action role playing, or watching a group of high schoolers showcasing their demonstration of robotics. For those who have children, they can have fun in the kids zone with some of their inflatable playgrounds for their enjoyment. And hey, there's another Pecos Pete's. Yeah, there's more than one booth of it in this convention, which is convenient, so there's no need to settle for just one location. Perhaps my favorite part of the activity section would be the section of Legos, and I enjoyed playing Lego in my childhood, but this group went above and beyond on their creations. Ranging from the Avengers Tower, complete with the Hulkbuster, to this astounding future setting, complete with a moving train set and a realistic portal, this maze structure, based off the Dungeons & Dragons games, or the Imperial Walkers from Star Wars. But my favorite design has got to be the reenactment of the Battle of the Alamo shown here. 
One of the group's members does everything he could to gather some accessories, as well as the right colored parts that would mesh well to make sense of the setting and effort goes to show. Very impressive indeed. Another great entertainment piece is MechCore. What you do is that you enter these pods in which the inside is designed to look like a cockpit and engage in a virtual simulation of a mech battle. Very intense action to try out. I'm always happy to see my friends at Retro Circuits, doing what they do best, showcasing modded games as well as letting us try out really expensive games that are very hard to come by nowadays. For old school gamers like myself, I much rather have and play the games in a different yet cheaper form from people like these guys, rather than going out of my way to get things from other dealers that would sell things at outrageous prices too much for the average consumer. Of course, no comic convention would be complete without comic book artists showcasing their wares as well as selling their pieces to the general public. And as expected, they show many great designs of all of our favorite characters as well as new ones introduced for the first time. These designs are not just limited to comic book characters as there are also characters from different TV or movie media. Aside from collecting art and comics, there will also be dealers selling action figures such as what you see here. Many of them being from media in the 80s or 90s, some being sold at cheap prices, while others are at a higher rate either due to rarity or being kept pristine for years. These days, Comic Cons are being more expansive by not just limiting to just American culture, as you can see here that Japanese media has become so important to this type of convention as well. As per rules of the convention, I'm not allowed to make any films of the celebrity area and I can only post some pictures and describe them. As such, this is where people would line up for meet and greets with celebrities, even take pictures with them, but for a price of course. I've actually taken pictures with celebrities in past years, but the 2018 years seemed rather weak in the celebrity department. It's not inherently bad mind you, but there wasn't that much I wished to see, with the only picture I got was myself with George Lowe, the voice of Space Ghost in Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Rolls right off your tongue. The only major celebrity for that year was Tom Holland, who is the current actor in the more recent Spider-Man movies, but sadly his cost is around 150 bucks, which I can't afford, even with a friend, so I skipped the idea. This convention has no shortage on cosplays as I've seen so many great cosplayers that I was able to take pictures of, especially during that one Saturday during the photoshoot of Marvel vs DC, and I was glad to even take a video of it. Yeah, I'm gonna get, yeah, I'm gonna get a video of this everybody! Bro. <laughs> yeah, there's Musashi X here, everybody. Um, uh, co coming at you live at um at uh Comic Palooza 2 2K18. Yo, sorry, everybody. That's right. So yeah, you can see. So yeah, you can get you can get all this action. Um, you can get all this action. Um, YouTube.com, Musashi X Chronicles. Um, fo follow um, my my um, page, everybody. <laughs> and here we have an indoor parade of Star Wars cosplayers. It's great to see that the convention's third floor also has a gaming section full of great arcades, especially for old school junkies like yours truly. Some games include Street Fighter 2, X-Men, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mortal Kombat 2, or this giant as heck Pac-Man machine. And hey, I don't mind doing a personal score attack with it any day, or enjoy pinballs of different themes like Spider-Man or The Walking Dead. And here are some quick highlights that I actually took in this convention as well. Okay. 
I would then end my weekend by watching some of the cosplay contests, and what's cool is that it was being hosted by Celebrity Orlando Jones, which is really cool. Overall, I think this convention still holds up, but it's not without flaws. I know that some attendees didn't get their money's worth given how much weaker the guest list was, and I agree with that. For me personally, I was satisfied with the amount of things to do in the convention aside from the usual cosplay photography, though I'll admit the convention could have done much better by adding some things to be more innovative. Still a decent show nonetheless, and I'll find myself going anyway since it is an easy drive for me. Thank you for watching this video, and I can't stress enough how much I apologize on taking forever to making this video for this part of my channel. I hope to do better next time on planning my videos carefully, as well as trying to keep up on making these videos with what little time I have each day. Now if you like this video, well feel free to subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to like and follow me on social media. Until then, this has been Musashi X, and I bid you all farewell. Take care and stay tuned.